oldest in the country and at least the oldest in New Jersey. So the visionary people that started this were pediatricians um, who just thought it was the right thing to do. They built it and grew it. So we've had many people along the way. Some of our current pediatricians were the initial folks that covered. Uh, Dr. DeGroote, Dr. Noaz. Um, we had Dr. Hagee and Hyatt who were initially here running the unit for many years. Um, and then they were followed by Dr. Fox and Dr. Rekadal, who were here for many years. Dr. Rekadal just retired a year ago. He's still around. Kirby, come on up. Come on. Um, Carlos followed Kirby. He was next in line in the, in the parade, so he's been here about 25 years now. I came after that 23 years ago. Um, Dr. Atardi about 21 years ago. We've had a couple other people in between who came and went. Um, we loved them all and enjoyed working with them all. Now we're having some new people, younger people, come and help us build as our program grows. We're adding more staff. So we're very lucky. We have Dr. Ferrucci here today. She's been here about a year. Dr. Kale has been here about a year. Um, Dr. Walter is working. So thanks to someone who has to hold down the fort. Right? So she's at the hospital. She would love to be here, but she's working today, uh, taking care of all the babies that are currently in our unit. Um, we've had a long history of nurses staying so long and being so dedicated. Um, some of them are here today and they will talk as well. Sue Sanborn, who couldn't be here today, but her son is here, he'll say some words. Um, we've had people that have just stayed and stayed and stayed, and then we've had new people who've come and helped us to grow and get better. So I don't want to take away all the time of the other people talking, but I thank you all for being here. Your support is so valuable. The funds raised help us to buy things for the babies and take better care of them than we could without these extra resources. The money goes to excellent use, and we really want you to keep coming back year after year, even when we're 51, 52, etc. So <laughs> hopefully we'll all still be here too. Um, so I will now let Bill Arnold um, have a few words, and then we're going to move to the rest of the program, okay? Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here and to be part of this great party, which Dr. Atardi was very concerned about. And thank God for the weather because I promised her a great party and this turnout is just unbelievable. So thank you to all of you. I just have actually, because so many people have been thanked, I'm not going to re-thank them, but I did just see Dr. Fisher back there. I'm not sure I heard her name. Our chairman of the Children's Hospital, Dr. Fisher. Now, I think we thank just about everyone we possibly could from the hospital. If we missed anyone, please raise your hand. No, they never do. Now I'll get away with it if I miss one. So listen, this, today what I heard, the first thing I heard was family. A lot of talk about family. And I can't think of a better day of Sunday, although there was one family member or friend of Mario Manello's who said, it's usually her day to be making the sauce, so we got in a little trouble for the miss the sauce opportunity on Sunday. But when it comes to family, there's not a better department to recognize than the NICU. This NICU really treats the department and the patients like part of their family. And I think that's why a day like today comes together so well. You have your physicians, your nurses, all your professionals that support the unit, your, your uh, families that use the unit, the patients. The, there's some patients here that are older than older than me, I think. It's 50 years, so I can say that one or two more years. Uh, so again, it's all about the family, and that's why this year's family that we're honoring, the Manello family, and Mario, I'd like you to come up and bring any of the family members that you'd like to stand up and say a few words. But, this family is all about family. They look out for themselves, they look out for their neighbors, they look out for their friends, and we're lucky that they're looking out for us at Monmouth Medical. There's not a week that goes by that Mario doesn't check in to see if there's anything we need at the hospital. And I can't think of a better department for him to really be focused on than the department that took care of his grandson, Michael. So with that, I want to introduce Mario Manello to come up and say a few words. Mario?
that's okay. Even, even better, his daughter. <laughs> Some people never meet their hero. I gave birth to mine. Our very blessed family of four, my husband Michael, our three and a half year old daughter Leah, our two year old miracle Michael Anthony, and myself, Laura, are so honored to support the neonatal intensive care unit at Monmouth Medical Center on your 50th anniversary. On the eve of my 30th birthday, July 1st, 2016, we put our daughter to bed and ordered takeout from our favorite restaurant. I went into my bedroom to change my clothes, bent down to fix a picture frame, stood back up, and felt my water break. I immediately said to myself, I'm only 25 weeks. What does this mean? Why is this happening? Will this baby be okay? For both pregnancies, I always had extra fluid, known clinically as polyhydramnios. With my daughter born full term, I never thought it would be any different this time around. With no warning and no other medical concerns, this was a total shock. My then 18-month-old daughter stayed home with our babysitter, asleep in her crib and unaware that she would wake in the morning for the first time without me there. When I arrived at Monmouth Medical, per my OB's request, I was rushed to labor and delivery where I was examined and thankfully found out I was not yet dilated. This meant they were going to do everything they could to keep that baby safely inside as long as possible. I received steroid injections for his lungs, antibiotics, and a magnesium drip to help avoid going into active labor. Three weeks later, due to dangerously low levels of fluid from my water rupturing a second time and decreased fetal movement, an emergency C-section was performed 28 weeks into my pregnancy. On July 22, 2016, we welcomed our son, Michael Anthony. He was born at 2.56 p.m., weighing only three pounds, four ounces. I never could have imagined how life would challenge us in those weeks to come. August 2nd was the day when everything changed for Michael. The first 11 days of his life weren't easy, to say the least, but it was what we expected, what everyone prepared us for. I was so naive to think that the worst part of this experience was not being able to bring my baby home right away. But then, all too quickly, things took a turn for the worst. When Mike and I got to the NICU on day 12, I knew something was off as soon as I saw him. He was pale, lethargic, and not his feisty little self. The testing began, the medications, the transfusions. Our worst nightmare unfolded so quickly. He went from doing so well on CPAP to being reintubated within a few short hours. I remember stepping out into the hallway with my dad for a moment as they got Michael settled. I looked at him and said, Dad, for the first time, I'm really scared. I remember the doctors and nurses advising me to call my husband and ask him to come. I remember them telling me not to touch him for a little while in an effort to keep him as calm as possible. And then I remember them bringing over a chair and telling me, sit with him, touch him, do whatever you need to do. In that horrifying moment, I knew with painful clarity how dire the situation really was. His heart rate continued to climb and his platelet count continued to drop, the lowest being only 9,000. The lab decided to redraw the blood count because they, even they, couldn't believe what they were seeing. At one point, his heart rate was 242. Lizzie, his incredible nurse that evening, reacted and immediately called Dr. Kale. The most difficult thing was watching our child suffer, knowing we would do absolutely anything to save him and being utterly and completely powerless all at the same time. We were at the mercy of his doctors and nurses and of course, our faith. In the middle of the night, in a quiet NICU, all of the bright lights were on Michael. We had to sit back and let them work. At one point, my face was in my hands because I felt like I couldn't watch for one more second. The ice on his face trying to shock his heart out of that rhythm, the triple checking of the calculations, failure to obtain his blood pressure, and the list goes on. Dr. Kale is one of the many doctors that saved his life and saw us through some of his darkest hours. I remember grabbing her hand and begging her to tell me what was going to happen. She may have prepared us for the worst, 
but she did the absolute best she could to keep him alive. I thanked her over and over again. All she said was, don't thank me, this is my job. Dr. Kale, you did so much more than that. <laughs> Two days later, when Michael's lab results came back, we learned that he had sepsis, staph aureus. The necessary medications to beat this began, and our little fighter continued to fight. Then, exactly one week after what we thought would be our worst night, we were faced with our biggest challenge yet. On August 9th, Dr. Hudon called me at five o'clock in the morning and told me that Michael was not oxygenating and they had no choice but to switch his breathing support over to an oscillator. It was clear that something else was very wrong. That was the day I asked for a priest. Michael was declining, his organs were failing, and we knew there wasn't much time. Again, the tests began, searching for a cause. And just when I thought we were clear from another horrifying piece of information, Dr. Rivera, the cardiologist, came in to scan his heart. Shortly thereafter, we were told that Michael had life-threatening endocarditis. He had developed a massive clot as a result of the Staph aureus infection that occupied the entire right ventricle. As his little heart was working so hard to pump, pieces of that clot were moving to his lungs, which is why his breathing had taken such a dramatic hit. Immediately after he was diagnosed, it was explained to us that Michael's needs were extreme and exceeded what Mammoth Medical was capable of. Dr. Rivera insisted that he be transferred to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia as soon as possible. In a split second, everything changed. That afternoon, Michael's team of doctors made the arrangements, and a few short hours later, the massive transport team came to take our baby. The memories of this night are almost too painful to recount. I hugged his doctors and nurses, not knowing if we would ever see them again. They took him out of Mammoth Medical, put him in an ambulance, and drove to the Long Branch High School football field. We followed. As they were pushing Michael in the transport isolate towards the grass, I stopped them. I bent down so I could look at him one more time and said, Michael, you have to keep fighting. Your sister wants to meet you. Mommy and Daddy love you so much. And with that, they locked the gate. Mike and I were on one side and our then one pound, five ounce baby and a helicopter were on the other. I held onto that fence and watched until they were out of sight. No control, completely numb, and an unbelievable feeling of desperation. At CHOP, we were told that Michael was very sick, the severity of his condition was rare, and that we needed to prepare ourselves. He was not a candidate for surgery due to his size, so our only option was to begin heparin and subsequently Lovenox, both anticoagulants, in an effort to bide more time to allow Michael's body to break down the clot. Each day was an uphill climb, but our literal fighter hung in there. After five long weeks and too many uncertain nights to count, Michael returned to Mammoth Medical. I always thought the best day would be taking him home, but I was wrong. Seeing Michael back with his original team in a hospital that we now called home, knowing he was going to be okay, that was by far the best day. All of the neonatologists from Mammoth Medical, Dr. Carlos Alemani, Dr. Diane Atardi, Dr. Susan Hudome, Dr. Mira Kale, Dr. Kirby Reckadal, and Dr. Aaron Qualter all went above and beyond for him and for our family. We are eternally grateful. To all of the nurses that took care of our son, I want to name all of you because you deserve the recognition. Lizzie Werner, Sue Sanborn, Lua, Laura, Nudomsky, <laughs> Jess Kutch, Stephanie Terhune, Mariam Butler, Chris Galizio, Katie DiBernardo, Gina Zaluski, Tina Van Note, Kate Rapetti, Kim Mandato, Mary Jane Dominguez, Christine Piccarello, Michelle Leahy, Vivian Silverman, Lauren Castellano, Sherry Young, and last, but certainly not least, Ali Sargent. Ali, Michael's primary nurse, was with him from the day he was born. She took care of our son before we could, 
helping us hold him for the first time and teaching us how to change his diaper with his teeny tiny legs. For everything you did for us then and all you continue to do for our family, there are truly no combination of words that could ever adequately express what you mean to us and just how much we love you. You are an angel, a gem, a rare gift, and one that will be treasured forever. The level of knowledge, attentiveness, compassion, and care that was given from the entire Monmouth Medical staff is immeasurable. Your team is as good as it gets. To our parents, our siblings, and our families, no one is better than you, and no one is luckier than us. You never, ever left our side. It is because of you that we continue to put one foot in front of the other when it felt like the weight of the world was on our shoulders. Your unconditional love and unwavering support could never be matched. We thank you all and love you endlessly. To our Michael, our miracle, our real life superhero, you struggled and battled and fought and overcame when all of the odds were against you. Never underestimate the power of a preemie. What a difference two years makes. May your future be as bright as your smile. God bless you today and always. Lastly, I don't know what we ever did to be so lucky, but I promise to spend the rest of my life being so thankful for my beautiful children. Thank you so much. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the ACD of the NICU, somebody that we love very dearly. She works like an animal. The one, the only, Trish Lamberti. Sue Sanborn. She wasn't able to make it up because of the hurricane. I'm here with her son Raymond, who was a 30 weeker 30 years ago. And he had lungs of a 24 weeker. So Sue just wants everyone to know that she knows what you're going through. Raymond was born July 29th and did not go home until October. He went home on oxygen for five years, a feeding tube, and now he's here to tell you that it all works out. We did not have steroids then, and we didn't have oscillators, so we just did everything we could with what we had. When you be, are in the NICU, you, you, don't, you leave, but all of the staff there remains your family. 
Ray was lucky enough to be able to grow up with all of us and I was lucky enough to become a big part of his life. And just thank you to the entire NICU for everything that you do. I don't know. Hi, how you doing? I'm, I'm Ray. I'm Sue's son. Uh, she left the NICU earlier in the summer. She was an employee there for 35 years. And um, I just want to say a couple words real quick. Um, it's really good to be here today, and thank you again for Trisha for stepping in for my mom. If she didn't want to do this and speak, I probably wouldn't either today. So, um, I just wanted to say how great the NICU is here at Monmouth Medical Center. If it wasn't for the nurses and doctors in the NICU, I wouldn't be standing here today. Um, they're just truly really a great group of amazing people. And, and I had the best of both worlds. I grew up around all these people because they're also my mother's friends. So being around them and growing up with them, I, uh, I really had it made. So, um, and, uh, so I wanted to thank all the nurses, doctors, respiratory therapists, and everyone else that makes Monmouth Medical's NICU number one, and it always will be. Thank you very much. The next person I need to introduce is our NICU manager, Bonnie Adler. Hey, Bonnie. Hi, everybody. I don't have much to say because everybody has been so eloquent in their words. I've only been at Monmouth Medical Center for the last five years. But I can tell you, I've worked all over New Jersey, and I've never met a more dedicated team. They truly treat every family as if it's their family. That's what makes us special and makes all the doctors special. It's the teamwork, but it's not as a team. It's as a family. And each and every one of our graduates is part of our NICU family. And we're just, just grateful to have a job and work with such amazing people. So thanks, everybody, for being here to support our NICU. I'd like to invite everybody from the committee up to the, the stage, please, all the nurses who belong on the committee. Any of the nurses? Hello, hello. Doctors, everyone. Attending physicians. Come on, come on, Michael. Dr. Fisher. Laura New, where are you? Carol. Steps right here, okay? Rachel, Rachel, this way. Come down, come down. 
third place. I hope okay. we pick you, Vincent. Thank you. 